I have what feels like a mental block when it comes to finding my motivation to do things I love doing, such as creating music. I'm not depressed at all, and I don't take drugs. Will meditation help me unblock and find myself again? Thank you. Much love. <laughs> Will meditation motivate you? Will medita meditative motivate you to... No, will, med will meditation um, create desire in you? Passion? No, no meditation won't do this. Unfortunately for you, or fortunately, but um, unfortunately in the sense that we say unfortunately in these situations, um, it'll do the opposite. Meditation will probably motivate you to give up and to denounce um, <laughs> things like creating music. Mahasi Sayada said, uh, "Most people, most people don't appreciate the Dhamma, the Buddha's teaching. It goes perfectly counter." to the world. It goes perfectly counter to those things that people hold, um, ordinary people hold valuable, like creating music. I'm not depressed at all and I do not take drugs. And that is somehow significant, uh, significant because um, some people's motivation, lack of motivation might be due to depression. But in your, in your case, you just can't be bothered. Because, and I will tell you, because the reason why, I'm assuming actually, but I think it's a good assumption, is um, because you're feeling the, um, the arbitrariness of your attachments. We don't cling to things because they're value, valuable. We cling to things because we've come to convince ourselves that they're valuable. Arbitrarily, completely, 100% arbitrarily, in the beginning, that they are valuable. That's a profound thing that I don't think uh, is understood well enough. You, you assume, and it goes back to the human thing as well, you assume that liking music means that music has some intrinsic value. It doesn't. It doesn't have any intrinsic value. There's nothing even to indicate an intrinsic value in it. To understand that, though, requires you to deconstruct entirely what it means to be human, what it means to be a sophisticated, what it means to be happy, and, and all of our presumptions and assumptions about right and wrong, natural, unnatural, all of these things are getting in the way of that. And so we wind up with a belief that um, music has artistic, um, philosophical, that music is good for the soul, that it has value, soul value, value to the soul. So how many constructs does it take to get there? You have to construct a soul, which is in turn predicated on a, a presumption of, uh, of entities, of things being able to exist outside of the momentary experience of them. Um, it's predicated on, or it stems from, let me see, it stems from the belief that pleasure is somehow satisfying. Basically, that's let's say that's the basic premise 
that is required um, because at its at, at the core of the reasons why we like music to take this example is a simple apparently a simple pleasure that comes from being able to anticipate um, and what mu so what music does is it provides us a rhythm that we can get into and this allows the actually I'm, I'm grasping here but I'm pretty sure what it's doing is allowing the pleasure centers in the brain to fire repeatedly you know and uh, um, rhythmically and so you get that pleasure this is why you know, you're in that and then you suddenly get uh, a stimulus that is unpleasant so I'm listening to my music and then my mother comes in and starts yelling at me to turn it off why that immediately infuriates me has to do with the disruption of the perception of pleasure uh, from the music from the rhythm actually this is why jazz music I would again I'm grasping I don't have scientific evidence for this but th this is an assumption that this is why jazz music is jazzy because it's exciting you're not actually able to predict so you're constantly being challenged by the music to fall into that never so much that it's going to jar you out of it but it's 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 not quite you know it's playing with you so it's the spice it's no longer just pop rock or or kids music it's now kind of pleasure spiked with pain which you know creates tension when you can't get what you want for a second and then you can get it right the chase leads to excitement a adrenaline so it's playing with actually all of the different chemicals the music is able to play with all these chemicals but in the end that's what it is now this has evolved into assumptions based on uh, concepts which are totally artificial like art culture the soul um, humanity and so on and so on that has turned us into real snobs and most people are snobbish about their music especially musicians so people who create music I was a musician we can get very snobbish and uh, and and so it becomes a, it, it actually takes on a, a an ego uh, of its own but the point that I'm making is that in the end it's all artificial it's meaningless it's, it's nothing even that pleasure the pleasure centers in the brain even the fact that those are pleasurable is something that is an understanding that we've acquired it's an ignorance it's based on ignorance it's a delusion that we've acquired more or less arbitrarily um, but systematically and as a species we've come to agree on it for the most part Pante. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Chanting, Buddhist chanting, it can be sing song, not unlike music. No, it shouldn't be. In fact, monks are not allowed to sing song their chanting. Really? Yeah, though, though nowadays it's you can see how it's falling apart. It's funny how more and more and more you'll see crazy sing song chanting. Really crazy. Like it's embarrassing really because um it's like like when your friends come over and they and they say your father drunk or something. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm trying to adjust this. Um, when your friends come over and, and catch your see your parents drunk or 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 misbehaving themselves, like I had a party. Oh, I'm not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we've all had that. Um, that's kind of what it's like because I deal with Westerners. So whenever Western people come to Thailand or so on and see these, come and see the, the monks and then they get this where monks are singing, for example, I don't know what to say. It's like, do you denounce them? Well, you can't denounce your parents. Do you defend them? Well, you can't defend something that's un indefensible. So you're put in an awkward position, which is why I don't like to spend too much time in cultural monasteries. I had no idea. Hmm. So
So did I did I completely ruin your chance for asking that question? <laughs> That's good information. Good to know. Yeah. yeah, the Buddha said singing is like wail is considered wailing in Buddhism. Dancing is considered insanity. Um and he he gave he gave when he said that monks aren't allowed to sing uh, sing the chant put a melody to the chants uh he gave reasons for that he said if you chant beautifully you become intoxicated by your voice the listener becomes intoxicated by your voice uh and there was a third i think reason or there's at least three reasons i can't remember them but he gave specific reasons for it and i always think about that even though i can't now remember them all um and and it's so obvious i mean how could you we're just deluding ourselves into thinking that somehow it's not there any time your chanting is beautiful what's going to happen how could you not become intoxicated by it how could you not become enchanted by it and therefore um cultivate desire for it attachment to it how could it possibly not so chanting should be actually quite uh, christian chanting is much better because while there is something kind of haunting about it, but you know, Catholic monks or so on, their chanting is much more inspiring. You know, now it's not, some Buddhist chanting is quite inspiring, and uh, I'm just particular about which chanting that is. I like Sri Lankan chanting, ordinary Sri Lankan chanting. Not the there's the funny stuff as well. They've got a real tradition now of funny stuff, the sing song stuff. Um, but uh, ordinary Sri Lankan chanting I like because it's quite simple. I guess it's my my version of Sri Lankan chanting. I found that a two tone chant is is best. I tried doing a mono tone, and I'm not sure why, but uh, that's harder on the voice, probably because of how the vocal cords work. Probably. A high tone and a low tone use different parts of the vocal cord, or one of them is tensing it, and so you can't keep it tense that long. I don't know, but if I do two tones, it's it's more comfortable. So I'll do iti piso bhagava arahang samma sambuddho vinja charana sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisadamma sarati satta deva manusana. So up and down. Um, it sounds almost like I'm singing it um, with the two tones, but I'm doing it for my own benefit, and I think that's appropriate. For example, but I wouldn't go any further than that. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's the first part of your question. Will medit? But but the assumption that you have here: Will meditation help me unblock? Let's let's go more general and talk about that. Will meditation help us to unblock our the things that are good about us? So it, to that ex to some extent, it will. Um, it will help you to straighten out your mind. And I would bet I'm going to have to ret re re retract something I said because I think in the beginning it would help you become more. Uh, in tune with your music, uh, potentially, because um, something is blocking, there's blockage, right? And that could be organic, um, that or that could be mental, because it could be physical or it could be a mental block. Um, meditation will help to sort out those blocks, put you more in tune with your desire for music, your attachment for music, your love for music. It'll put you more in tune with those core, strong uh, emotions and, and desires that you have. That doesn't mean those desires are in any way good or useful. So everything I said is, is still valid, except where I said that it will uh, immediately distance you from them. No, it won't in the beginning. In fact, it'll, uh, it'll, it may actually increase your desire for music. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, because that's going to then um, lead you on the wrong path. But you know, eventually, then you'll you'll come back to where you are again, potentially come back to right where you are again, because the music will 
in the end um, hurt you. That's the word. It'll it'll dull in the dull your mind to the extent that you can no longer you'll lose your passion again. Anyway, the meditation helps you get in touch with these things because you're no longer um, you're no longer cultivating the the qualities that you're no longer as complicated you're much more streamlined the brain becomes more streamlined more efficient and the mind also becomes more streamlined and more efficient um, but finding yourself again so will meditation help me unblock and find myself again yes I think it will also help you find yourself in a um, symbolic way doesn't mean you will find your soul but it will help you to center yourself and it won't be again, it will be anew. And if you keep practicing meditation, it will help you see things that you didn't realize. That in fact, your love of music, to some extent, probably, uh, ironically, was instrumental, partially instrumental, in leading you away from music. Because your love of music... Um, will pollute your mind and will dullen your mind to the extent that you can no longer produce the music that your pure and fresh mind was able to do. That's it's not not necessarily your ca the case in your in your situation, but um, quite often and qu quite quite um, potentially quite uh, quite it's a real potential, and if not. The, if not directly, then the livelihood involved with the life involved with creating music, the drugs, the alcohol, the sex, the um, you know, just the, the debauchery that, that's generally associated with it not always, but often um, will certainly play a part in my case anyway play a part in your inability to be to be as creative as you used to be people who are Truly creative have to have a very pure and sharp and and, and profound mind. As an ex I guess a good example, and it's just grasping at straws, would be Bob Dylan, who um, you know he was one of my big, one of the guys I always looked up to. Um, I'm not certainly on the only one, um, but int it's interesting if you hear what he has to say about himself. He says he can't do the things he used to do before. He's not able... I mean, I guess that part of it has to do with age as well. But uh, when he was young, he just had such a... He didn't, know, he didn't even know where it was coming from. But he was just able to come up with the most incredible creativity that eventually went... He said it, it went not dry, but well, yeah, it, it went... It disappeared. It faded away. And he was no longer able to do that. And so an argument could be made for the actual lifestyle that it led to. You know, a lot of drugs and, and alcohol, and, or I don't know how much, but, but just the attachment to sensuality involved with it. I don't know. Anyway, not, not to say anything about him particularly. Maybe I shouldn't actually pick people out like that, but um, an argument could be made. So it will help you hopefully to find yourself anew and to realize some things you didn't realize about music and the fact that it is an artificial construct and not really of any intrinsic benefit to you. It's not actually making you happy.